This is the sable palm, Florida state tree. For thousands of years, it survived fire and ferocious winds and the flooding associated with the storms that are common in this region. It provided food and building materials for Native Americans and for early European settlers. But today, it is apparently in decline. A new and threatening disease makes its future uncertain. This is the story of how the University of Florida is attempting to protect this iconic symbol of the state and its people. The first time that I saw photos that indicated there was a problem with the sable palms was in the fall of 2007 when Rob Northrop sent me photos of sable palms that were certainly declining and we just really couldn't put our finger on why they were declining. We first identified the sable palm decline in Manatee County from some sables that were in a pasture um, in the Palmetto um, Parish area. And those samples were taken um, and brought back to the laboratory here in Fort Lauderdale and that's when we identified, we were able to obtain the DNA to identify the pathogen. We've had lots of experience with other palm diseases, even new palm diseases. Uh, what we do when we're doing a field diagnosis is determining if this is similar to something we've already seen and then making the field diagnosis accordingly. And if it's different than anything that we've seen before, then we start that process of trying to rule out some of the common causes that may cause those symptoms. And if we, like in this case, simply cannot find a common disease that we've seen before, start looking for something new. There's a possibility that uh, we can take the, uh, the, the, the crown out of this and there'll be enough uh, firm tissue uh, that's that's been spared from rot that, that we can work with, but there's absolutely no guarantee until we actually take it down and cut into it to, okay. to see what's there. We took a number of samples uh, uh, from the park, uh, several trunk samples, but uh, we were there uh, especially uh, to extract the hearts from two palms with advanced stages of disease. And they were brought back to the laboratory here at the Fort Lauderdale Research Station. We did our analyses on all of the samples. All of them turned out to be positive. They tested uh, uh, clearly uh, positive for Texas Phoenix decline. And we are using the uh, samples uh, that we obtained uh, from uh, the two palms uh, where we actually uh, cut out the, the hearts of the palm there and the DNA samples that we uh, were able to obtain from those tissues have turned out to be superb and we typically include some of that DNA as our known positive uh, each time we run these uh, molecular diagnostic assays. Agents of the University of Florida's Extension Service, whose job it is to develop practical applications from the knowledge and information developed by the research scientists, continue to monitor the spread and the movement of the disease. They're also field testing the use of antibiotics. The Extension Service is holding seminars to encourage the correct use of the antibiotics to treat symptoms and improve the overall health of the trees that are infected. You can get in and treat with um, tetracycline antibiotics, but the effectiveness of the treatment is all dependent upon how quickly you catch the palm. And uh, we find that most people are inclined rather to treat symptomless palms with the antibiotics, uh, just for the, uh, the peace of mind that nothing's going to happen to them, rather than to try and uh, bring uh, an infected palm back from um, the dead, so to speak. What happens is, um, the palm will come back to the point where it'll resume normal growth, but unfortunately the antibiotics are not curative. Is it still a source of infection for other plants? Theoretically, you would have to say yes, uh, but the reality is we haven't been able to demonstrate that one way or another. The University of Florida, with its extensive network of county agents and regional research stations, 
continues to work on finding a solution to this problem and on protecting the diverse and fragile ecosystems of Florida.